A proxy server acts as an intermediary between a client requesting a resource and the server providing that resource. It can serve various purposes like caching resources for faster access, anonymizing requests and load balancing among multiple servers. Essentially, it receives requests from clients, forwards them to the relevant servers and then returns the server's response back to the client. There are several types of proxy servers, each serving different purposes. Here are some of the main types. The first one is forward proxy, which sits in front of clients and is used to send requests to other servers on the internet. It's often used within the internal networks to control internet access. Next one is reverse proxy, which sits in front of one or more web servers, intercepting requests from the internet. It is used for load balancing, web acceleration and as a security layer. Another type is open proxy, which allows any user to connect and utilize the proxy server, often used to anonymize web browsing and bypass content restrictions. We also have transparent proxy types, which passes along requests and resources without modifying them, but it's visible to the client and it's often used for caching and content filtering. Next type is anonymous proxy, which is identifiable as a proxy server, but does not make the original IP address available. This type is used for anonymous browsing. We also have distorting proxies, which provides an incorrect original IP to the destination server. This is similar to an anonymous proxy, but with purposeful IP misinformation. And next popular type is high anonymity proxy or elite proxy, which makes detecting the proxy use very difficult. These proxies do not send X forwarded for or other identifying headers and they ensure maximum anonymity. The most commonly used proxy servers are forward and reverse proxies. A forward proxy acts as a middle layer between the client and the server. It sits between the client, which can be a computer on an internal network, and the external servers, which can be websites on the internet. When the client makes a request, it is first sent to the forward proxy. The proxy then evaluates the request and decides based on its configuration and rules whether to allow the request, modify it or to block it. One of the primary functions of a forward proxy is to hide the client's IP address. When it forwards the request to the target server, it appears as if the request is coming from the proxy server itself. Let's look at some example use cases of forward proxies. One popular example is Instagram proxies. These are a specific type of forward proxy used to manage multiple Instagram accounts without triggering bans or restrictions. And marketers and social media managers use Instagram proxies to appear as if they are located in different area or as different users, which allows them to manage multiple accounts, automate tasks or gather data without being flagged for suspicious activity. Next example is Internet Use Control and Monitoring Proxies. Some organizations use forward proxies to monitor and control employee internet usage. They can block access to non-related sites and protect against web-based threats. They can also scan for viruses and malware in incoming content. Next common use case is caching frequently accessed content. Forward proxies can also cache popular websites or content, reducing bandwidth usage and speeding up access for users within the network. This is especially beneficial in networks where bandwidth is costly or limited. And it can be also used for anonymizing web access. People who are concerned about privacy can use forward proxies to hide their IP address and other identifying information from websites they visit and making it difficult to track their web browsing activities. On the other hand, a reverse proxy is a type of proxy server that sits in front of one or more web servers, intercepting requests from clients before they reach the servers. While a forward proxy hides the client's identity, a reverse proxy essentially hides the server's identity or the existence of multiple servers behind it. The client interacts only with the reverse proxy and may not know about the servers behind it. It also distributes client requests across multiple servers, balancing load and ensuring no single server becomes overwhelmed. Reverse proxy can also compress inbound and outbound data, cache files and manage SSL encryption, thereby speeding up load time and reducing server load. 
Some common use cases of reverse proxies are load balancers. These distribute incoming network traffic across multiple servers, ensuring no single server gets too much load. And by distributing traffic, we prevent any single server from becoming a bottleneck and it's maintaining optimal service speed and reliability. CDNs are also a type of reverse proxies. They are a network of servers that deliver cached static content from websites to users based on the geographical location of the user. They act as reverse proxies by retrieving content from the origin server and caching it so that it's closer to the user for faster delivery. Another example is web application firewalls, which are positioned in front of web applications. They inspect incoming traffic to block hacking attempts and filter out unwanted traffic. Firewalls also protect the application from common web exploits. And another example is SSL offloading or acceleration. Some reverse proxies handle the encryption and decryption of SSL TLS traffic, offloading that task from web servers to optimize their performance. Load balancers are perhaps the most popular use cases of proxy servers. If you'd like to learn more about them, check out my next video, which will be a more in-depth into load balancers and the specific algorithms used in them.